Good afternoon, everyone. Happy New Year and welcome back to a brand new 2024. Hope all of you had uh, very good breaks and had uh, and made some great memories during your holidays. And now we are back to battle the markets. My name is Tilan Vikramasinghe. I'm the head of research for Maybank Singapore and welcome to Market Mondays. Uh, a very strong, uh, a stronger, I would say, U.S. jobs report, as well as some of the stricter uh, tech regulation in China are keeping the markets on, on edge, especially when it comes to the direction of where ASEAN markets are going. Um, how, is, how is this going to affect Singapore and how is Singapore placed going into 2024? That's something that we're going to discuss from a macro perspective. We've got our economist Brian on the line. He's going to take us through that with some forecasts as well as some highlights. Uh, then I'm going to take over and I'm going to talk about our Singapore market strategy as well as our top 10 stock picks for 2024. And then we're going to drill down uh, to one of the key sectors uh, that we think is important this year, the Singapore REITs. And we have Krishna online who will take us through that. But first, as usual, let's uh, look at the market moves. Uh, we saw that uh, the ST, uh, the S&P is up about 0.2% last week, as well as the Dow Jones, uh, which is up about 0.1% as well, uh, largely driven by some of the uh, US jobs data that is coming through. Uh, we also saw the Japanese uh, uh, markets also up about 0.3%. Uh, across ASEAN, though, generally quite mixed, uh, the Jakarta and the CT down about 0.1 to 0.5%. Uh, the STI uh, was up about 0.3%, partly driven by the banks. Uh, we did see on the commodity side, uh, oil actually rising about 1.5% for Brent crude, partly uh, driven by uh, the issues uh, that are happening in the Red Sea area. We saw Bitcoin uh, giving up some of the gains from last year, down about 1.2%. Now, uh, with that, let's start with macro. And here uh, I've got uh, Brian, who's a macroeconomist uh, looking at Singapore on the line. Uh, Brian, welcome to the show. Now, you know, Singapore's fourth quarter GDP actually ended up in a pretty decent high note, accelerating to about 2.8%. So what's your take on the latest GDP readings? What are some of the standouts and how does this gel in with what you were thinking for 2023? Yeah. Hi, Dylan. Uh, thank you for having me. Um, hi, everyone. Yeah, so uh, indeed, the GDP growth in the fourth quarter uh, surprised us at 2.8%, uh, um, and that exceeded uh, our expectations of 2.5%. Uh, uh, basically, if you look at a growth breakdown, uh, the main reason was a strong manufacturing and construction recovery, uh, while services growth was uh, largely steady. I think maybe special mention to construction, which uh, surprisingly accelerated to 9% to uh, compared to six, just about 6.2% in the third quarter. Uh, I think to put things into perspective, the construction growth was the strongest in a year. Uh, activity has been upbeat uh, given the backlog of public and private sector projects and also reopening normalization tailwinds. Uh, after all, the sector remains uh, about 19% below pre-pandemic levels. I'll give you an example. HDB said uh, that it completed 21,400 public housing flats in 2023. And this is the highest number in the last six years. So that definitely con contributed to construction activity. Uh, I think moving on to manufacturing, manufacturing growth rebounded to 3.2%, and that snapped uh, four quarters of consecutive contraction. Uh, and this was due to uh, green shoots in exports, We're seeing a gradual export recovery. Uh, we think that electronics and transport engineering were likely the leading growth manufacturing clusters, uh, given the recovery in international air traffic, shipping, and global electronics demand. Um, I think if we look at 2024, the outlook, uh, we are expecting stronger and more balanced economic growth of 2.2%. Uh, that's compared to the 1.2% seen in 2023. Um, we are expecting a brighter manufacturing outlook. Uh, global electronics demand is recovering, driven by a replacement cycle with new models and upgrades for tech, uh, depleting U.S. inventories, uh, generous U.S. subsidies on semiconductors and electric vehicles, which will support import demand, and also an artificial intelligence uh, AI boom. Uh, construction, we are expecting it to continue expanding at a robust pace as it normalizes further towards pre-pandemic levels. 
And this is given the backlog of public and private sector projects that are still in play, such as in public housing, infrastructure, healthcare, and hospitality. And also new projects will support construction activity, such as the $4.5 billion expansion at Marina Bay Sands. Uh, in the services sector, revenge spending in consumer services will likely fade as a pent-up demand pulls off, and high prices and a strong Singapore dollar could also be crimping demand for hospitality, retail sales, and uh, food and beverage services. Uh, but trade-related and outward-oriented services sectors, including wholesale trade and financial services, will return to positive growth in 2024, with the global demand pickup and also easing domestic interest rates. Uh, loan demand could see a turnaround in the quarters ahead as trade volumes and business loans pick up with higher trade financing, while consumer loans start to recover as uh, mortgage loans uh, mortgage rates slide. Uh, we are expecting our three-month SORA rate easing in the second half uh, from the current level of 3.7% to 3.25% by end 2024, tracking the Fed rate cuts. Uh, now, if I move on to just some downside risks that we are thinking about for the economy in 2024, I think this includes uh, higher for longer US and global interest rates amid still some uncertainty about the Fed's uh, future rate path. And this may hurt global growth and threaten the export recovery, uh, which Singapore is so sensitive to. Uh, the Red Sea's uh, ship disruptions are also a risk worth watching, as any major and prolonged escalation may disrupt supply chains, inflate shipping costs, and dampen global trade. Uh, another risk is a renewed climb in domestic inflation. This could stem from more persistent labour market uh, tightness or fresh commodity price shock from a broadening of the Middle East war, Israel Hamas war, uh, is El Nino or other weather events. Uh, ultimately, higher for longer inflation, we fear that it may crimp purchasing power and household consumption, and it may also induce the MES to be forced to tighten via a steeper appreciation bias to contain price pressures. Um, and this would ultimately hurt the economy and also hurt our export competitiveness. Uh, so yeah, that's my uh, the outlook for 2024. And uh, back to you, Dylan. Thanks, Brian. Uh, so acceleration of GDP growth, a fairly broad based sort of growth across manufacturing, construction, as well as some of the services sectors as well. But it's not without risks, uh, particularly in terms of uh, some of the higher interest rates, uh, you know, remaining uh, high for longer, as well as some of the geopolitical risks as well. Uh, thanks, Brian. That's a very comprehensive outlook and obviously uh, quite positive for Singapore as we go into 2024. Now, let me kind of take a step back and put that into context for the markets. Uh, we've just published our Singapore strategy note uh, for, uh, for 2024, and that has our top 10 picks, as well as where we think the market will go this year. Uh, but, you know, let's, let's look at 2023. Uh, the SDI was uh, ended up flat uh, the, the, in the year. Um, that is still a better performance than what we saw with uh, the KLCI or Thailand set index, but uh, certainly uh, a worse performance than some of the North Asian markets like Japan, Korea, as well as the US as well. Now, from a fair value, pers uh, from a valuation perspective, from a PE perspective, the SDI is now trading at a 50% discount to the S&P. This is the cheapest the index has been in its history. So I think, you know, when we are at this sort of inflection points, there are opportunities, but we need to also still take into consideration the fact that the Chinese economy is still sputtering. Um, the U.S. fiscal impulse, the domestic spending in the U.S. is very, very strong, which is continuing to support some of the U.S., uh, support the U.S. market. So until some of these issues start to get uh, rationalized, uh, ASEAN valuations uh, will uh, will have will probably be a bit capped, and I think Singapore will be included in that. So I think uh, at least going into the first half of this year, investors will need to be a lot more selective uh, in terms of the stocks that they pick. So and we you know and we title uh, our report "Time to Cherry Pick." So time to pick the best stocks uh, to write this out. Now. Looking at 2024, we think that market earnings will grow at about 3% uh, year on year. Now, that's a much slower pace than the 18% that we're expecting 2023's uh, earnings to close. And we'll have a better, better idea around February this year when fourth quarter results come out. Uh, but 
last year, there was a lot of support from the fact that the banking sector saw margins increasing because of high interest rates. And also, Singapore reopened early. So there were some tailwinds from uh, some, of, some of the reopening uh, impact as well. Uh, but at the same time, this 3% sort of growth does have potential for upgrades going into the year. Um, areas uh, like interest rate cuts, uh, semiconductor inventory building, uh, bigger order books for, for the offshore and marine sector, uh, as well as green energy, should see support coming in uh, for a lot of companies that might drive some of these earnings upgrades as we go through uh, the year. Plus, we also see very four, four very unique um, uh, themes that are taking place in Singapore, and they're all happening pretty much at the same time. The first is we're seeing a lot more corporates as well as GLCs restructuring, uh, and we think that will accelerate going into this year. Uh, and, and largely this is being done so that they can drive better return on their invested capital. Shareholders have been calling for better invest return on invested capital, and we're starting to see companies respond to that. Uh, and, and the results are there. The shareholders are really, uh, you know, uh, uh, rewarding companies who do this. Uh, if you look at some of the earlier GLCs that have restructured, particularly back in 2020 to 2023, uh, we see that the restructured GLCs have actually outperformed the STI around, by around 15%. Second uh, theme that we're seeing is increasingly institutional investors uh, have to uh, allocate more and more of their uh, more and more of their AUM towards uh, sustainable investments. Um, now, when you look across Southeast Asia, Singapore has some of the lowest risk uh, sustainable companies uh, across the region. So uh, naturally, Singapore should re uh, receive a larger proportion uh, of uh, sustainable investments, uh, sustainable allocations from institutional investors. Uh, and, you know, we did see sustainable investing slowing down in the first half, but our ESG research team expects that pace to have picked up in the second half of this year, uh, second half of 2023. Uh, and we should start to see some of those results coming through around February this year. Thirdly, uh, we expect more regional M&A to happen by Singaporean companies. Uh, a lot of Singaporean companies are looking to supplement slower growth at home with faster growth in the region. Um, and the, a strong Sing dollar, uh, cheap uh, valuations across the region, as well as a lot of a lot of the themes on supply chain relocation from North Asia to ASEAN is taking place, and the, a lot of Singaporean companies are well placed to benefit from uh, uh, some of these uh, key uh, key changes. And then finally, Brian also mentioned this. We think technologies like AI, five G, IoT, they will drive the next wave of cost savings, uh, as well as drive the next wave of new revenues as well. Uh, and here again, a lot of Singaporean large caps have been investing quite early in technologies like 5G and IoT and AI, uh, particularly the banks, for instance. So they probably will benefit ahead of a lot of other regional peers. And at the same time, Singapore has a national AI policy as well. So that should again provide the regulatory uh, uh, tailwinds as well uh, in, in driving a lot of these changes. So um, I think there is a lot of uh, opportunities here uh, to drive earnings upside. Our STI target for this year is 3290, which is about 3% higher than here. And largely that is because of valuation discounts that I talked about, because until we start to see, you know, uh, until we start to see, can we, can we continue to uh, keep on the sector slide, please? Um, and that's largely driven by the uh, the valuation discounts that I talked about from from you know China's slower China as well as some of the U.S. market uh, uh, strength as well. Uh, now, from a sector point of view, it, it, again that means that you need to be a little bit more selective. And now this uh, 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 this slide here shows you how we are kind of placed in terms of our sector preferences. We are more positive on sectors like gaming, industrials, a little bit on internet, uh, as well as some of the REITs, uh, services and transport sector, as well as uh, the telecom sector and some of the technology sector. We are a little bit more neutral on some of the large cap uh, sectors like the banks, as well as plantations and some of the developers as well. Now, when you go uh, drill down to our uh, stock positioning. Next slide. Um, I think 
uh, you know, the way we are kind of uh, positioning ourselves at the start of this year is to cherry pick the best stocks that are geared towards these themes, as well as the stocks that are that have been laggards last year, but now actually can turn into uh, leaders because they will benefit from uh, interest rate uh, being cut or uh, inventories being built. So you can see on the theme side, we have stocks like Comfort Delgro, DBS, Dynamac, and Singtel, who will benefit from ESG restructuring, m and uh, AI. And on the laggard side, we we're a little bit more heavy on REITs, like uh, Ascendas REITs, CICT, uh, as well as uh, then Lease Global Trust. Uh, and at the same time, a few uh, few more tech names as well, like Franken and Venture and Genting Singapore as well. A lot of this is available uh, in our newsletter today. So it's a, we have a, a very comprehensive report. So I, I, I do encourage you to read the report uh, to get uh, get get into depth uh, for uh, as you look in look at building your portfolios this year. Now uh, to go to our chart guy, uh, Nick. You know he. His views on uh, the STI kind of dovetails with what we are saying. Um, STI has generally been range bound uh, around the 480 point sort of range. Uh, and we think that he thinks that it will continue to be range bound in the near term. But uh, contrastingly, on the S streets, he is a lot more bullish. And he thinks that the downtrend that was seen last week uh, has actually sparked a new favorable bias on the S Reeds index. So he expects the index to uh, set an uptrend going into the near term. So I think this is a good opportunity to bring uh, Krishna in and our, our S Reeds analyst at this stage. Uh, Krishna, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you, Silvan. Thank you very much for having me. Hi. So Krishna, you published a report um, where you talked about uh, where you talk about your 2024 roadmap uh, for the REITs and you're calling for higher peaks and deeper values. Uh, so why are you expecting so much volatility? Yeah, precisely for the reasons that Brian alluded to and also you alluded to in your uh, Singapore strategy note. Uh, about the growth uh, being a bit more uncertain, a lot of geopolitical factors are there. And inflation, the trajectory of inflation is uh, a bit uncertain. Uh, we are seeing for the Singapore context that uh, inflation has been higher than the real growth for six consecutive quarters, which is a record since 2000. Uh, and, and, and this kind of sets the tone as to you know how difficult it is to uh, get the inflation number down uh, with the various shifts ongoing in terms of the supply chain and the geopolitical concerns. So one data point which suggests that we are having a soft landing, a slowing growth can lead the sector to, uh, to, to, to show massive growth, uh, what we have seen in December, uh, rather starting from the November itself. And then one data point which suggests that uh, things are not as rosy can uh, lead to some introspection and, and sell off. Uh, so I think that is why I think I have I have, I have uh, titled my report as uh, higher peaks and deeper valleys. Um, Ilan? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so bit of uncertainty. I think uh, we need to see a little bit more data points coming through now. But when you drill down to like the subsectors, how are you kind of uh, you know settling in on the different subsector views? So I think um, in the report, we mentioned that we have become uh, subsector agnostic. I think going into 2023, we started with industrial and hospitality. Uh, industrial did well, uh, and, and, and it, this has been supported by the strong uh, growth in the spot trends for sectors such as uh, logistics. Uh, it has also been supported by uh, flatted factories as well. Um, Hospitality, uh, yes, the counters did deliver on distribution growth uh, because of the low base effect, but that did not uh, turn out uh, positive for the for the for the share prices itself, barring a couple of idiosyncratic names such as uh, Fraser's Hospitality Trust and Far East. So. I think coming into 2024, uh, we think that you know the choices for uh, subsectors are a lot more difficult because uh, for industrial is well owned, and supply is coming to uh, coming into fruition. So I think the growth for the spot trends will be not as easy as it was in 2023. For hospitality, it is very much contingent upon whether we are able to get um, the Chinese demand to come in. 
um i think uh, the 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 chinese visitors are undershooting uh, the uh, uh, the pre pandemic levels um and 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 the hoteliers are already talking about lowering the uh, room rates and 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 focusing more on the occupancy so it is very much contingent upon um how the you know chinese demand comes through and without any reopening tailwinds um coming to office i may mean, think we all know that um you know the office occupancy overseas is definitely weak in singapore it has come back to about 75 to 80 percent uh but still i think uh, overall economic activity uh, is continues to be muted and you know we are already saying that services will be slower now and manufacturing will pick up the slack so that does not set up uh, it's not a good constructive setup for office demand itself uh, further you know we um, the 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 main driver of the demand in the first half of 2023 was the small space take up by a lot of the family offices and now what we understand is uh, the approvals are a bit slower so that also will uh, impact uh, the office demand but uh, suffice to say if economic growth picks up then definitely this is a sector to watch because uh, the supply is very limited um, and 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 though there are there is some shadow space um, if economic growth picks up then definitely you know the marketing of those spaces will uh, will also be at a higher rent levels uh, and finally on the retail side of thing uh, definitely the singapore retail uh, consumer day consumption is relatively resilient uh, the recent data points have been a bit soft uh, but if um, unemployment does not uh, pick up massively um, and and we do have a control on the inflation then we can see some uh, uh, some 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 positive um, uh, data points around the retail sales itself, um, and and for the city center it will again very much be dependent upon how the tourism picks up. Um, so it's a it's a resilient sector, but you know we need to watch out for um, you know the consumer sentiment itself, which again will depend upon uh, the growth and inflation numbers. So I think. The sector's choices and the sector drivers are not that clear cut coming into 2024. And hence, we are more um, in a stock specific uh, rather than sector specific. And I think that dovetails to your uh, strategy note piece as well, where you're saying more to cherry pick rather than having any broad based view. Yeah. So I think I think this year, a lot more homework needs to be done uh, when we're looking at uh, stock picking. So, you know, Krishna, let's let's go into your stock picks. So what are your sort of key stock picks at this stage? So I think the top names are uh, CICT, Capital and Ascenders, and Lendly's Global Commercial REIT. So I think the main reason is um, the few things which we have taken into account. The first is obviously the liquidity that the stocks offer so that if you have got your thesis wrong, you are able to get out without much uh, impact. Uh, so the CICT and CLAR uh, kind of tick mark uh, both those both those uh, uh, boxes. And the second thing also we have looked at overall, um, you know, the how they are uh, positioned against any uh, wrong judgment on the interest rate or the FX side of things. So both of them are A-rated credit, um, and they do have buffers to manage any uh, you know price repricing of the borrowing. And on the FX side, uh, CICT is a 90% uh, Singapore dollar income. And for uh, capital and ascenders, they do natural hedging uh, almost to the for all their overseas exposure. So there is, uh, you know, the cushion for uh, impact on any any kind of uh, uh, wrong view on, on, on the liability side of things. Uh, for Lendly's global commercial REIT, um, it's a small cap name. Obviously, it does not provide you that much of liquidity. Uh, but the comfort factor here is that they also have predominantly uh, Singapore income. About 80% uh, of the distribution comes from Singapore. They do have well-located assets. Uh, the overseas assets that they have, they have already taken a valuation hit. Uh, and they are still trading well below book. Uh, so if there is any, uh, you know, sustained uh, rate cuts, then um, the, the names such as Lendlease Global should benefit because there is a lot of concern around their gearing and as well as uh, the upcoming uh, maturity schedules that they have in 2025. Um, suffice to say, uh, their acquisition pipeline is quite robust uh, coming from their sponsors, uh, various projects that they are having in Singapore and globally. So it is more of a uh, view that uh, investors have to take. It is not an easily tradable stock. 
um uh, and uh, and and one has to take a, a mid to long term view on that name so those right. are my uh, topics for the sector thanks krishna uh, i just realized our cict uh, uh, stock price was in ring it uh, so yes long, uh, oh so please mm. do uh, uh, please we apologize for that um okay now let's uh, quickly go into upcoming events um we've got quite a few uh, ev- uh, macro dates coming out we've got singapore's fx reserves coming out on the today um we've got the nodex numbers coming out on the 17th of january and the inflation numbers coming out on 23 23rd january everyone's looking uh, for the property price index um you know given the sort of roller coaster we've had last year ura property price index comes out on the 26th of january uh, we have a few key events that are, we are hosting as well uh, we've got the country strategy outlooks um, for across the different asean countries uh, again um, uh, on the 12th of January, please do speak to your salesperson if you want an invite for that. We have a Thai tech uh, day as well, which is on the 16th of January. And uh, I, I do want to highlight on the 20th of January, we have a market outlook and a, f- a feng shui outlook seminar uh, at Singapore Exchange uh, happening. Um, so uh, it's, it's going to be a fantastic event a uh, lot of fun activities as well as uh, up close and personal with some of our analysts uh, as well as with the feng shui master as well so if you haven't uh, signed up for that please do scan this qr code and sign up uh, because uh, seats are limited and they're on a first come first serve basis uh, with that we are out of time for this week thank you so much for joining us uh, on market mondays um, we hope to see you next Monday. Please do uh, ask your friends, colleagues, everyone else that you uh, that you like to join our, our web, webcast. Um, that really does help us to build momentum. Uh, have a profitable trading week. Thank you. <laughs>